it's Lala and welcome my golden ear friends to the wild and crazy golden ears where the time to be happy is now and the place to be happy is here. So today's tutorial is going to be on why our foundation separates after you thought you had a flawless application. There are six easy tips to prevent this because there's nothing more frustrating than putting on your makeup and before you even get out of the door, it's starting to migrate south and look like a, a well-composed compost. At least mine does. <laughs> I'm a little bit out of it. I went to Portland this weekend to watch my amazingly fierce granddaughters play in roller derby. So I'm just kind of worn out and from screaming. Sounds a little bit like Mae West, maybe, or possibly a duck, but bear with me. So the first reason that it, your makeup can run is not waiting enough time between, between products to let it dry. You need to dry in between products. So say you, you washed your face and patted it dry and then I immediately go to the skincare. Some people want to wait, but you really don't need to. Say you've applied the moisturizer, that's your last step, then you need to wait at least five minutes before you put on your sunscreen. And that's because you want that to settle so that when you put your sunscreen on, it's not going all askew. So that's like a five minute wait. And then you put on your sunscreen and then you need to wait at least 20 minutes before you apply your makeup. And that's where you can just go make breakfast, feed the dogs, um, bark orders at your husband, whatever you need to do to get that to settle, do your hair. There's a lot of things to do in that time. But if you don't have the time, then there is a, another... Uh, way to shave off about 10 minutes. <laughs> that is not to wash your face in the morning. If you've washed your face really good the night before and applied your moisturizer, then in the morning you can just start with your skincare routine. Or if you feel you're a little sweaty from the night, especially if you still have hot flashes, you'll take some micellar water and Garnier makes a really nice micellar water. And I will link every product that I show in the description below. So you will take it on a pad and you will wipe it over your face and then go to your um, skincare. And if you don't want to wait between moisturizer and sunscreen, there are moisturizing sunscreen. But I have found a few that are moisturizing that have a good sunscreen in them. So you can try that. So that eliminates waiting between moisturizer and sunscreen, but you still need to wait at least 15, 20 minutes before you apply your makeup. That's when you go get your coffee and everything that I had suggested before. Number two is using formulas that don't complement each other. Okay, that would be like if you're using a water-based makeup, then your primer should be water-based because oil and water don't mix. So you wanna be careful there because that can cause your makeup to separate because you know it's just confused. So make sure that you know your skin type. And that's what the second part of this video is gonna be about. It's gonna be about how to find your makeup and that's coming in number two. So if you do like these kind of tutorials, I would love it if you would like and subscribe and ding my bell. That way you never miss these epic videos. <laughs> okay, number three, dry skin. Now that's my big culprit especially because I use Trentinon. And that can, that really, you know, you really have to moisturize when you do that. If you have patchy or flaky skin and you apply your makeup over it, it's going to look again like the compost or maybe a cracked riverbed. You know, you just really want to have a, a nice moisturized face before you apply your foundation. And it's important to have the right foundation for dry skin. You don't want any kind of foundation that will dry your skin out even more. Okay, and then having said that, number four is oily skin. Yes, just like dry skin, you can separate on the nose and, and uh, face if your skin is oily. And especially if you're not following a really good skincare routine for your skin type. That's very important first. And then to get a makeup that is especially geared for oily skin and um, acne prone skin, if that's still your case in the golden years. Most likely it's just incredibly dry, but pay attention to that. Then number five is neglecting regular exfoliation. Now I told you I use Trentinoin and that's considered the uh, holy grail of exfoliation because it's turning over your, uh, dead, your skin cells and sloughing off. <laughs> quicker than you normally would. Uh, but um, if you're not using tretinoin, it can still build up 
you know, um, what is it here? Say, ooh, impurities and dead skin cells. And if you're not removing this, then your skin care, then your make foundation will not go on smoothly. And all you have to do, it, uh, some people cannot do, take exfoliation, but once a week. I use uh, e.l.f. Holy Hydration Gentle Exfoliation. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and I'm, I just showed you a picture. And or there's other great um, gentle scrub face washes you can use. And I use mine three times a week. And even though I use Tretinoin, I just really feel it helps in getting off the skin cells as they turn over. So the how often you use an exfoliation is based on your skin. So you really want to take it easy to start with. And I have a video I'm going to a link after this video is about exfoliating. I went in more detail on how to do that correctly for your skin. All right. Last but not least is over applying your makeup. We, you know, we have flaws. We've got um, uh, rosacea like I do. We have uh, dark spots, or just uneven skin tone. And so we just want to slather it on quickly to just cover it. But it, it's, it's more important for you to start out slow. That was one of my issues too, because some, some days my rosacea is worse than others. And, and so I was over applying and that does, it really causes it to separate and look poo poo caca. So <clears throat> be aware that makeup is buildable. Unless you go right for a full coverage foundation, um, I, I imagine that's, that's, excuse me, is buildable as well. But uh, I, I tend to go to a medium coverage and then I will apply it all over my face, just one squirt. And it's a hydrating, um, I make sure I use a hydrating foundation. And I'll go over different types of foundation next, next Friday. Do it nice and easy. I use a sponge. Um, you can use a brush. Just make sure it's a really good brush that's not going to pull your skin. A dry skin, it, it seems to me, is always better with a sponge. And it's not fully, you know, it's, it's squeezed out all the water. And then I apply that. And then I look in the mirror and find out where I can still see the imperfections. Now, if you're looking in a real close-up mirror, it's not going to work because you, you can see all imperfections when you're this close to a mirror. So I pull back and look, and then I will... Do a little bit more and go on the places that I want fuller coverage and down your neck nice and easy and then just keep patting until it looks like it's well blended in. That's all you have to do. You have to remember less is more. I once heard a flawless makeup will always equal a flawless day and eventually a flawless life. <laughs> so my, fr my friends, my golden year friends, I would so love to hear to get your feedback and to have suggestions on what you'd like to see me bring to the table. Because it's the only way I'm going to get to know you. And I really want to get to know my Golden Year friends. I want to bring you topics you want to hear. I want us to enjoy this part of our life. We do have to age, but we don't have to be feeble. Don't forget Friday, 2 p.m. Mountain Time for part two, five types of foundation formulas that you should know. I'm sorry for my, you know, I had to get it out. It's Wednesday. Don't want to miss my peak. Okay. Thank you for joining me and I can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye.